All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to talk about a really cool concept called the limit point. And essentially, all that it answers is the question, given a train SN, where can you go using express trains? In other words, a number S is a subsequential limit or a limit point of a sequence SN if and only if there is a subsequence SNK that actually converges to S. So definition, S is a subsequential limit or a limit point of Sn if and only if there is a subsequence of Sn, so it is a subsequence Snk such that The limit as k goes to infinity of s and k equals s. In other words, it's just the limit of a subsequence of s n. So it's just a if you want a destination of an express train of uh, your sequence. And let's do a couple of examples so this makes a little bit more sense to you after that. Hopefully, uh, consider the sequence. Sn, which is minus 1 to the n, which again just alternates between minus 1 and 1. Minus 1 and 1. And the question is, where can you go using subsequences? Well, one possibility is you just choose a subsequence minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, which goes to minus 1. But you could also have the subsequence 1, 1, 1, 1, which goes to 1. So the set of subsequential limits here, which I denote by capital S, of subsequential limits, in this case, it's just the set minus one comma one. And I like to think of it a little bit as like bows and arrows. So if you start with a bow in the subsequence, where do you hit it? So here it's minus one and one. But then there are other fun examples. So I really want to emphasize though, uh, the limit points, it's not the same as the range of the sequence. So it's not always just the values of your sequence because consider the following example. Example two. Uh, S, Sn is the following sequence, so it starts out here, and then eventually it just alternates between zero and two. So this is zero and two. Then the question is, what is the set of limit points of your sequence? Well, one possible subsequence here, maybe like this, is a subsequence that ends with a bunch of zeros, whose limit is zero, but then another subsequence might be something like that, where it just ends with a bunch of twos. So in this case, the set of subsequential limits is just 0, 2. But careful, it's not the same as the range of the sequence. The sequence goes from up here and then goes between 0 and 2. So it's almost like the range, but in the long run, if you wish. All right, and then here's another fun example. I like this one a lot as well. So Sn, I think it's a, a zero if n is odd, and then n if n is even. I can't even. Um, so. So what does it look like? So at 1, it's 0, and then at 2, it's 2, and then 0, and then 4, and then 0, and then 6, etc., etc. 
So it just alternates between zero and huge values. And the question is, what are the subsequential limits in this case? Well, there's one subsequence here that's just all zeros. So definitely zero is a subsequential limit. But if you think about this, any other subsequence, it either doesn't converge or uh, I mean, it doesn't make up its mind at all, or it actually converges to infinity, I mean, diverges to infinity. So there's another possible uh, subsequential limit. So what I'm trying to get at is infinity can also be part of a subsequential limit. So in this case, s is just zero and infinity. And even worse, Consider the following really cool example. So example four, let Rn, it's a sequence we've already discussed before. So Rn be just an enumeration of all the rational numbers. So if you remember, it's a sequence that looked like this, it just snakes back and forth between all the rational numbers, then what have we shown? We've shown this really cool fact, namely, even though this sequence is extremely wild, so it might look like this, okay? even though this sequence Rn is pretty wild, one thing that we've shown is that given any real number, a. a is actually the limit of a subsequence. So recall, and again we did this with the inductive construction, so given given any a in the real numbers, there is A subsequence RNK of RN with RNK converging to A. And what does that mean in terms of limit points of subsequential limits? Well, it means really all the real numbers are limit points of the sequence because for any real number it is actually the limit of a subsequence so you might say well s is r but more than that is true because of course you can also attain infinity using rational numbers just choose a sequence one two three four five six seven eight nine etc and you can also attain minus infinity in the same way so S isn't just the real numbers, but it's the real numbers with minus infinity and infinity, which sometimes it's called the extended real numbers. So R star or R bar, eh? bar bar. <laughs> so, and that's actually really cool, why? Because even though the rational numbers are countable, so even though you know, the sequence only has countably many values, the limit points are actually uncountable. It's just all of R star, if you want. And by the way, that's another definition of Q is dense with R. It just means all the limit points, there are R star, okay? And mm, last but not least, and this leads me to the next point, consider the following sequence. So Sn, we've seen that also before, sine of pi n over two which again, it shows one, zero, minus one, zero, one, zero, minus one, zero, da, da, da. So it looks something like that. Again, one, zero, minus one, zero, one, zero, minus one, zero, one, zero, minus one, zero, da, 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 da. <laughs> So this is our sequence SM. And the question is, what are the limit points? There are really three of them. So minus one, zero, and one very similar to the first example, but here's the thing I want you to notice. So S, in this case, it's minus one, zero, one. 
On the one hand, let's look at the supremum of s. So what is the biggest value of s here? Well, it's 1. On the other hand, what is the lim sup of your sequence? In other words, what's the biggest possible limit? Well, it's also 1. So in fact, here, the supremum of the limit points, it's also the lim sup of your sequence. And in fact, this is always true, and this is what I'll show now. So here's kind of neat fact that I will prove. Actually, three of them, just to finish the day. Uh, facts. Again, let Sn be a sequence and capital S be the set of limit points of that sequence. Then first of all, it turns out S is never empty. Okay. And why? Well, it turns out the limb soup of your sequence is always in it. And if you remember by one of the, I think, uh, um, yeah, by this really complicated video I did right before that, we know that there is a subsequence, uh, SNK of SN, that converges. to lim soup of Sn. So there is a subsequence that always converges to the biggest possible value of the sequence in the long run. But then, what do we know? Again, there's a subsequence here. We know there's a subsequence that converges to the lim soup. But what is that saying? Well, it says that, in fact, the lim soup is a subsequential limit so the limb soup is an S. It is a possible limit of a, a subsequence. And so limb soup of Sn is an S. And then we're done. So there is at least one element in S. Therefore, it's not empty. Now, the second fact has to do with the stuff I talk right at the end. And right at example five. So two, we know that, so it turns out that the lim soup or the supremum of S equals to the lim soup of Sn. And similarly with the inf, and how do you show that? It's super, super neat. So let S be any element in capital S, then by definition, there is S and K with, there's a subsequence S and K that converges to S. That's again the definition of a limit point or a subsequential limit. But then let's compare the value S and K with the supremum of S. So notice the following. So what is the supremum? It's again, I'm sorry, what is the limb soup? It's just the supremum of Sn after the long run. But notice the following. So this is Sn, your regular train. So that is Sn. And this is suddenly Snk, which is your express train. Notice there are many more regular stops than there are express stops. So in particular, if you take the supremum of all the Sn after this threshold, so notice, for all capital N, no matter what threshold you have, if you compare the supremum of Sn, where N is bigger than capital N, since there are so many more SNs than there are SNKs, that supremum has to be bigger than the other supremum. That's bigger than the supremum of SNK, where K is bigger than capital N. Again, because if you have a class of 200 students, the highest score is definitely bigger than the same class with which just 100 students, because you might have 
couple of very smart students that are not in the 100 students class. Okay, but what does that have to do with anything? Well, now let's look at the limb soup. So, the limb soup, as n goes to infinity of Sn, that is the limit as n goes to infinity of this junk, which is greater or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of this junk, but by definition that is the limb soup as k goes to infinity of S and k. But we know that S and k converges, so it's the same as the limb soup. So the point is that gives you S. So what do we know? We then know that for all s, so that's literally what we've just shown. So for all s, we have that s is less than or equal to the limb soup as n goes to infinity of Sn. But since s was arbitrary, we actually get that the biggest value of s is also less than or equal to the limb soup. So this was any arbitrary s, and this is the limb soup. So in particular, the supremum of s is also less than or equal to the limb soup. As n goes to infinity of sn. Last but not least, remember that the limb soup, by definition, or like by the last fact, that is in S. So we have one element in S, but any element in S is less than or equal to the supremum of S. You see? Because again, don't even worry about limb soup, just you have one element of S, so this is the limb soup. Well, it has to be less than the supremum, less than or equal, and therefore we are done. We find that the limb soup of Sn is the supremum of S. And similarly for the limit, you can show something similar. All right, last but not least, what happens if the sequence converges? So three, so if the limit, in, in other words, the limit of Sn equals S, then the question is, what are all the limit points? Well, there's just one. You see? Because any subsequence must converge to S, so that's the same thing as saying capital S is just one has just one element. And why is that true? Well, it's, it's a very quick proof that's very neat. So suppose that the limit of Sn is S, then what we get, we have the supremum of S is the same thing as the limb soup of Sn, but the limb soup is just little s, which in this case, it's the same thing as the limb inf. Again, since Sn converges, the limb soup equals to limb inf equals to the limit, but then by a variation of the second part, we get that it's the infimum. So the supremum of s equals to the infimum of s. And last but not least, what about the other way around then? Well, for the other way around, it's the same thing. We know that the limb soup of Sn equals to the supremum of S, which is just one element, which is little s, which is the infimum of S, which is the limb inf of Sn. And therefore, the limb inf equals to the limb soup, and therefore, the, by the limb soup squeeze theorem, the sequence converges. And then we're done. Thank you very much.